Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. So passage of scripture that is just full of information that will titillate your mind. And I would urge that you read all of that. I'm not going to read all 16 verses uh, this morning. It talks about the kingdom of God. And it starts by saying that the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He, he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon. And about three in the afternoon, and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? I'm going to urge you to read the rest of that passage when you go home. I'm not going to read all of it. But in this depiction, this encounter that Christ is having, it points out that some of us are called early in our lives and some later in our lives and it deals with a lesson that we all must learn and that is the concept of grace. When Edward Everett Hale was chaplain of the Senate, someone asked him, do you pray for the senators, Dr. Hale? He replied, no. I look at the senators and I pray for the country. We all need to receive the grace of God. The story is told about Mr. LaGuardia, who was mayor of New York City. And this was during the worst days of the Great Depression. And all of World War II was called by, uh, he was called by many New Yorkers and others as the little flower, the little flower. You see, he was only five foot four, and he always wore a red carnation in his lapel. He was a colorful character who used to ride the city of New York fire trucks. Uh, he used to raid speakeasies. Uh, he loved to ride around with the police department. He used to take entire orphanages, would go to the orphanage and take all of the kids 
to a baseball game. And whenever the New York newspapers were on strike, he would go on the radio and read the Sunday funnies to the kids. He's quite a character. One bitterly cold night in January of 1935, the mayor turned up at a night court in an area of the town that served the poorest ward in the city. LaGuardia had dismissed the judge in that area, that ward for the evening, and he took over the bench himself. Within a few minutes, a tattered old woman was brought before him. She was charged with stealing. What did she steal? A loaf of bread. She told LaGuardia that her daughter's husband had deserted her. Her daughter was sick. Her two grandchildren, she said, were starving. But the shopkeeper from whom the bread was being stolen refused to drop the charges against her. This is what he had to say. It's a real bad neighborhood, Your Honor. She's got to be punished to teach others around here a lesson. The mayor looked at the situation and he sighed. Then he turned to the woman and said, I've got to punish you. The law makes no exceptions. Ten dollars are ten days in jail. But even as he was pronouncing the sentence, he was already reaching into his pocket. He pulled out a bill and he tossed it into his hat saying, here is the $10 fine which I now remit and furthermore, I'm going to fine everyone in this courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a person has to steal bread so that her grandchildren can eat. Mr. Bailiff, collect the fines and give them to the defendant. The following day, the New York City newspapers reported that $47.50 was turned over to a bewildered old lady who had stolen a loaf of bread to feed her starving grandchildren. 50 cents of that amount being contributed by the red-faced grocery store owner. While some 70 petty criminals, people with traffic violations, and New York policemen, each of whom had just paid 50 cents, gave the mayor a standing ovation. Now here's my question. Did the elderly lady in this story get what she deserved? Clearly the answer is, of course not. She had stolen a loaf of bread. 
Yes, she may have had a reason. But stealing is stealing and regardless of the reason, punishment would seem to be the order of the day. But what we see in this story is called grace. Grace as when one in superior power shows kindness or mercy to one in a lesser position. Mayor LaGuardia, rather than demanding punishment of the woman herself, paid the fine and then further helped her in her cause with the collection of 50 cent fines and then gave the money to her. It was more than she deserved. It was grace. That is what our scripture text this morning is all about. It's all about grace. Today we're going to look at the parable of the workers in the vineyard. In this parable, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner that went out and hired workers for his vineyard. Some he hired early in the day, telling them that he would pay them the usual daily wage. He went back at various times of the day and found other workers who were waiting to be hired. Each time as he hired those that were there, he told them that he would pay them what was right. We're not told why some had not found work or if they had shown up at the marketplace late. We're not told any of these details. At the end of the day, he came to pay the workers. He began with the ones most recently hired, and he paid them a full daily wage. That excited those who had been there all day. They thought that surely if he had paid the late ones that much, he obviously would pay them even more for their hard work. But their excitement was short-lived. In fact, they were pretty upset when they got the same pay for working all day as those who worked only an hour. When the landowner heard them grumbling, he tried to explain that he was not unfair. He says, I am not unfair at all. He gave them what they had agreed upon. It was his money, and he could be generous if that's what he chose to do. We're not told in the narrative how the workers responded to his comment, it would seem that the land owner did not know much about business. For the next time he went out to hire help, none would probably go to work until the last hour of the day. But what the landowner did know about was grace. The workers that came at the end of the day did not get what they deserved. They got mercy. And mercy is at the heart of grace. 
Of course, in the parable, the landowner is God. And the workers are us. And the pay is the kingdom of heaven. As we study this parable, we can quickly see it's all about grace. First of all, beloved, the parable says that grace is received, not deserved. Grace is received, not deserved. For all of us, especially those who are people of faith, we know that we do not deserve God's grace. Nothing, nothing that we can do will put us in the position of deserving God's grace. All we can do is receive the gift that God offers. And he offers it freely to each one of us. David Siemens, in his book, Healing Grace, with this story. For more than 600 years, he says, the Habsburgs exercised political power in Europe. When Emperor Franz Josef the first of Austria died in 1916. He was the last of the extravagant imperial funerals of that era. A procession, procession of dignitaries and elegantly dressed court officials escorted the casket. The casket was draped in the black and gold imperial colors. And to the accompaniment of a military band's processional, and by the light of torches, this somber group descended the stairs of the Capuchian Monastery in Vienna. At the bottom was a great iron door leading to the Habsburgs family crept. Behind the door was Cardinal, the Archbishop of Vienna, the officer in charge followed the prescribed ceremony, a ceremony that had been established centuries before. Open, he cried. Who goes there, responded the cardinal. We bear the remains of the imperial and apostolic majesty, Franz Josef I. By the grace of God, Emperor of Austria, King of Hungary, Defender of the Faith, the officer continued to list the Emperor's 37 titles. We know him not, replied the Cardinal. Who goes there? The officer spoke again this time using a much abbreviated and a much less ostentatious title reserved for times of expediency. We know him not, the cardinal said again. Who goes there? The officer tried a third time stripping the emperor of all but the humblest of titles. We bear the body of Franz Josef, our brother, 
a sinner like us all. At that, the door swung open, and Franz Josef was admitted. You see, no matter, no matter, no matter who we are, no matter what titles we have, no matter how much we have, none of it can open the way to God's grace. Grace is given freely. What is left for us is to openly receive that grace. Grace is received, not deserved. And secondly, God's grace is about mercy, not about fairness. What would have been fair would be to pay, to pay the later workers less than the daily wage, or to pay those who had worked all day more than the daily wage. Now, that would have been fair. But when we speak about grace, it's something different, quite different than fairness. Grace is about mercy. God loves us. And God mercifully gives us more than we deserve. Can you say amen? Christian financial consultant and uh, an author, Larry Burkett, speaks in his book, Business by the Book. He speaks about going the extra mile, going beyond fairness. Early in Burkett's career, he leased an office in a building that proved to be a nightmare. The foundation had, been, uh, had not been properly constructed. The building was literally sinking several inches a year into the ground. And after more than three years of putting up with assorted problems, including power failures, several weeks without water, Burkett moved his business to another location. Two months after he left, Burkett received a call from his former landlord who demanded that Burkett remodel and repaint his former office, the office that he had left. Burkett said no, feeling he had already been more than fair with the landlord. But the former landlord continued to call. He continued to call. He continued to make his demands. Finally, Burkett consulted an attorney. And the attorney agreed that Burkett had fulfilled his responsibility and should not do anything further. Burkett went on to say that his son offered him some different counsel. His son reminded him that the landlord and his wife had lost their only child a few years earlier, and they still suffered from that tragedy. Burkett had often commented that he would like to help them 
He would like to help heal through their loss. Burkett's son suggested that this might be an opportunity to do just that by not doing what was fair, but what was merciful. Burkett says he considered what his son had said, and he decided to commit several thousand dollars to restore a virtually unusable building. Beloved, I want to say to you that that is going beyond fair. That's moving into the realm of being merciful. And that's what God's grace is. That's what God's grace is all about. Grace, number one, is received. Grace is not deserved. Secondly, God's grace is about mercy. It's not about fairness. And thirdly, God's grace is for the last as well as for the first. It's easy for us to say that we deserve more because we are the people who have been faithful to call, to, been faithful to the call of Christ. We've been faithful to the call of Christ for many years, yet our God does not work that way. Today and every day, God wants a relationship with everyone, a relationship with everyone. From those hired first thing in the morning to those that only manage to put in one hour at the end of the day. That's what grace is all about. Here's a story that I believe illustrates this point very well. A woman told how her father sexually abused her as a small child. She grew up. She overcame the emotional damage that had been done. She became a Christian. She eventually married. Years later, after her own children were fully grown, she received a letter from her father telling her that he had become a Christian and had asked God for forgiveness. He also realized that he had sinned against her and was writing asking for her forgiveness. Feelings that she did not know were there suddenly surfaced. It isn't fair, she thought bitterly. He should pay for what he had done. It was all too easy. And now he was going to be part of the family of God. She was sure her home church was busy killing the fatted calf for her father. And that she would be invited to come to the party. And she was angry. She was hurt. She was resentful. And then she had a dream. She saw her father standing on an empty stage. Above him appeared the hands of God holding a white robe. She recognized it at once because in the dream she was wearing the robe. 
She was wearing a robe just like the one that she is now seeing. And as the robe began to descend toward her father, she woke up. She woke up with tears streaming down her face. The only way she could get past it all was to realize that her earthly father was now the same as she. They were the same in God's sight. God great, God's grace was for him just as it was for her. Realizing that, she was finally able to forgive her father. You see, grace is a free gift that we receive. It's not what we deserve. It is about mercy, not fairness. And it is for the last as well as for the first. Beloved, it's all about grace. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your grace, your marvelous grace that accepts us as we are and makes us into what you would have us to be. For that redeeming grace, we thank you today. We rejoice in your grace. We rejoice in the knowledge that in you our sins are forgiven. Help us to walk boldly as children of the Most High God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.